Well, good morning to you. Oh, thank you. It is so good to be back. Thank you. Thank you. We had a, a nice time away. It was a holiday with kids. And it's good to be back. I'm just kidding. We had a wonderful time. We spent the first week at a family cabin in, in Sonia's um, family, and we fished, and we drove quads, and we used paddle boards, and we splashed around, and we had a great time. And then this past week, we, uh, we actually also went to the water slides. How many of you have been to Cultus Lake water slides? Yeah, it's an unforgettable experience. I'm still getting water out of my ears. But if you haven't, it's amazing. And, and little key, go on a rainy day. If you go on a rainy day, half the lines. But that was a great time. Spent some time at the beach and in our garden, of course. And so we're just enjoying these last days of summer. I keep thinking it's going to end, but my wife reminds me that this week will be 30 degrees again all week. So it'll be, it'll be nice. I love the hot weather. I love the sun. I love the, the water. Um, and we, we're enjoying our garden now, finally. So um, it's good to be back, though. It is good to be back. And we are finishing up our series. And how many know what book we've been in? Ephesians. Ephesians, thank you. That was an easy one, right? If you're visiting with us for the first time, we've been studying Ephesians for about nine months. Um, and six chapters, nine months, it's been amazing. I've really enjoyed it. I, I feel strengthened, um, and I feel that our theme verse this year has really come to apply in my own life, and our theme verse this year has been Ephesians 2.22, that in him, you two are being built together by God with the work of his spirit. And what's interesting about this verse is we've also been renovating the building, right? And as the building is being renovated, we are coming close to the end of that project as well. So downstairs will be finished at the end of September. Amen, hallelujah, praise Jesus. I don't, yeah. We've had our kids ministry in a portable for months and months and months. I mean, 30 kids in a portable. Um, we haven't lost any kids either, so that's a success. Um, and we've also had no offices for months and months. And so, you know, as our staff has, has grown to love each other, um, it'll be nice to have a little bit of our own space from Keaton. Um, and um, it'll be, did I say something funny? Um, no, it'll be just nice to have offices with doors on them. Um, and uh, we love you, Keaton, you know we do. Um, he's just loud. He sings like he does on stage all week, every day, everywhere he goes. And now that the bathroom only has one layer of drywall, it echoes and we get the sounds of the bathroom as he's singing like, great is thy faithfulness from the washroom. It's wonderful. Um, but uh, it'll be nice. But yeah, so we'll be done by the end of September downstairs and then end of October up here. And we're really excited. We're excited for the building. But, you know, more than that, we're excited to see what God has been doing in our hearts. You know, more than that, we're excited to see what God's been doing in us individually and what God's been doing in this community of people. That I, I believe that we've grown closer together. I believe that we see each other differently. We're experiencing each other differently. We're getting to know each other differently. And I'm enjoying that. So... So in September, we'll be starting a new series. And in October, we'll be starting a new series. And in November, we'll be starting a new series. And December, we'll be doing Advent. And January, we will be starting our, our study through the Gospels. And I want you to be excited for September. We're gonna look at what does it mean to be the church? And what does it mean to be the church that lives by faith? And so today is actually a little bit of a precursor to what's to come, which is today's message is about faith. Today's message is about prayer. Today's message is from the armor of God that we're going to look at the shield of faith. And specifically, we're going to look at today, why do we wear armor? And the reason we wear armor is because God has called us to prayer. 
We put on armor for prayer. We put on armor to fight a spiritual battle in prayer. And today I want to talk about what it means to be shielded for prayer. Pastor Jen, two amazing sermons the last couple weeks. Thank you for holding it down. She did it all. Let's give her a round of applause. And Pastor Jen looked at last week, how many of you this week, you threw some rocks? How many of you found some things in your life that you had to toss over a cliff? Well, Pastor Jen last week talked to us about the armor of God being a lifelong process of formation, discipleship, journeying with God. And today I want to talk about the role of the shield of faith in the armor. I can't go through all of the pieces of armor. It would take too long, so I focused on one because I'd be all over the place if I didn't. So today we're going to look at prayer and the shield of faith. The word pray in the Bible has a literal meaning, which means to exchange desires. The word to pray is literally to interact with the Lord by exchanging your ideas, your desires for his. Did you know that prayer is not a monologue? It's not a speech. Did you know that when you pray, you're not making God aware of something new? Anyone know that? How many know that God knows your situation better than you know it yourself? Okay. Yeah, we got some amens there. Right? And so when you go into the prayer closet with God, there is supposed to be a divine exchange where your desires, your wants, your ideas are exchanged for his. So when I go into the prayer closet and I spend some time with God, I should come out with new perspective, new ideas, new desires. When I go into the prayer closet, I'm I'm going in to allow him to transform me. So when I leave, I have a new perspective. When I leave, I am different. When I leave, I have different ideas, different desires. Prayer is an exchange. So many times I find myself in prayer and sometimes I feel worse after I pray. An exchange did not happen. How many of you have prayed over something fearfully, anxiously, fretting, crying out to God because you just feel worse and worse about the situation? How many of you have prayed for something and it's never been answered? How many of you have prayed for someone and they've never been healed? How many of you have prayed over a business venture and it failed completely? (laughs) These things happen. But in prayer, God exchanges our ideas for his. Our main point is that prayer activates the armor of God activates. It turns the armor of God on. We put on the armor through prayer. We take up the armor through prayer. We put it on through prayer and we use it through prayer. Prayer activates the armor of God defensively for protection and offensively in power. Defensively and offensively for spiritual warfare against the enemy of our souls. Let's begin in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. You've probably memorized Ephesians 6 by now, but I'm going to use my Bible. Paul is encouraging the church in Ephesus, and he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Everybody say full armor. armor. 
Don't go out half naked. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You know, I just have to say that when you go to Cultus Lake, Cultus Lake water slides, you, you can be just in a bathing suit. You know, you can be wearing just shorts, just a bathing suit. But how many would go into battle with just a bathing suit on? I wouldn't go into battle with just a bathing suit on. We need armor. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Finally, be strong in the Lord. I was taken with this verse. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong is actually translated become able. What I love about what Paul says is he, he doesn't say put armor on a weak person. Over our lifetime in discipleship, over our lifetime of spiritual formation, over our lifetime with God, we become strong. Over our lifetime of journeying with God, through ups and through downs, through resistance, through submission, through obedience, we become strong. And Paul is saying is, is, now that you've become strong, you put on the armor of God. In other words, Paul's not saying put armor on weak people. Each day we are presented with an opportunity to become strong. Sometimes we pray the armor of God as if it is this superstitious thing. As if the armor is suddenly going to cover over our lack of consistency, our lack of discipleship. And we just pray the helmet of salvation and the belt of truth and the shoes fit of peace and shield of faith, sword of the spirit. And I've forgotten one, breastplate of righteousness. And we kind of go out and we just go, okay, now I'm good. Listen, we need to become strong before we put on the armor. So when we put on the armor, we know how to use it. I, I play soccer. I love soccer. There's not a lot of armor in soccer. I wish I was a football player, then I could have a lot better analogy with this one. But just track with me. You know, I put on... Obviously, my shorts, my jersey, I put on my soccer socks. I slide my shin guards into those soccer socks. I put on my cleats. I'm now ready to play. But those cleats, that shin guard, those socks, that outfit doesn't make me a great player. What makes me, I'm still not a great player, what makes me an okay 42-year-old player is in between putting on the armor, I'm becoming strong. You see, notice that he says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. In other words, we need to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. We need to become strong in the Lord. The Bible says that you will never be tempted beyond what you can handle. The Bible says that he will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. The Bible says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. 
He has equipped us for the battle. But we must daily become strong. Daily become strong. There's this great passage in the Old Testament where David is constantly fighting against enemies. In this particular section of 1 Samuel, he's fighting against the Amalekites, and the Amalekites have come in, and they have taken over the city, and they have taken the women and the children. They have not killed anyone, but they have burned the city to the ground, and David arrives at the scene, and the people are greatly distressed. And it says this in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. David was greatly distressed... For the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in his God. David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. You know, I remember a few years ago where I was greatly distressed. I've had... Lots of moments in my short ministry career where I have been greatly distressed. And I remember a few years ago, and, and, and there was some people that were doubting my ministry, and there was people that were doubting my personality, and there was people that were doubting my preaching, and there was people that just doubt, right? Because you're different, and I'm, I'm different. I'm sometimes square peg, round hole different. Anyone with me? Okay. It just, you just have to shove me hard enough and I'll get through the round hole, but it takes a lot. And I remember years ago being greatly distressed, very anxious, waking up in the middle of the night in darkness and being anxious, overwhelmed. What's going to happen? What, what about this? Am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? Night after night, I would have these moments of greatly distressed and I remember hearing the sermon once where a pastor talked about we need to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. You know, sometimes we find strength in people. Sometimes we find strength in our spouse, our friends. We find strength in family. Sometimes we find strength with a favorite song. Sometimes we might find strength in our finances, our career. We find strength in a lot of things. But there are moments in your life where you need to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Because when you strengthen yourself in the Lord... Guess whose strength you carry? The Lord's. And there are battles that we all face and battles we're probably facing today and things we're going through today when your strength ain't gonna cut it. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not strong. Look at them again and say, but you're strong in the Lord. That one was a little bit louder. See, what happens in, in prayer is I come in weak and distressed. I come in and the people are planning to stone me. But something happens when I spend time with God. where I don't need my strength anymore because his strength comes upon me. And I say, it doesn't matter what is happening out there. It doesn't ha matter what's happening around me. It doesn't ha matter what's happening in my own thoughts at times. It doesn't matter because I'm gonna strengthen myself in the Lord. And when I strengthen myself in the Lord, I become strong. So first thing I want to remind us of today is you cannot become, you cannot be strong if you do not become strong. 
The armor of God is not a superstitious thing that you put on and now you're covered for battle and you're gonna win every battle. Because if you've been a Christian more than five minutes, we don't win every battle. We don't win every battle in the way we think we're gonna win every battle. Again, not everybody we pray for is healed. Not everybody we pray for is saved. Not everybody we pray for is healed and delivered. And it's just, it doesn't always happen the way we think it's gonna happen. We don't win every battle we think we're gonna win in the way we win it. But when I have the strength of the Lord, I can endure every battle. Strengthen yourself in the Lord and in his mighty power. Then put on the armor of God. The armor is both defensive and offensive. The armor is like an armored tank. It is reinforced with steel on the outside to withstand what might be coming against it, but it also happened to have a rocket launcher also attached to the front of it. For me, the armor of God is both defensive, it is something I can be protected behind, but it is also offensive. I spend some time with the armor of God in a defensive position, strengthening myself in the Lord, working out in the Lord, becoming strong in the Lord, being protected by the Lord. I invite the armor of God to protect me defensively. And some days we wake, pray, and slay. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we wake up and we go, and God's like, okay, now's the time, Joel, because you've become strong in me. Now I'm sending you into battle offensively to slay some demons, right? To break through the darkness, to pray for healing, to pray for deliverance, to pray for salvation, to evangelize, to do missions, to do outreach, to do inreach, to do everything, right? There's some times where we put the armor on defensively for protection, to gear up, to strengthen ourselves, to go out offensively. The armor is both. It's not one or the other. Today, did you leave your armor at home? I'll tell you one place it is not good, in the closet. We wake up and we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. We put on the armor, then we leave the house. The armor of God is activated for prayer. It's activated in prayer and it's activated for prayer. I wanna talk about one piece of armor today. I said that before. I wanna talk about the shield of faith. It is impossible to take a stand against the enemy with a shield of fear. There are two shields that we raise up in times of attack. There are two shields we have an option to pick up and use. There are two ways that we protect ourselves when we are attacked. A shield of fear or a shield of faith. Interestingly enough, the Greek word for shield is also a word for window. It's a word for window. In other words, it's not just a shield of protection, but it's a way that I see the world. And many times in our life, we deploy a shield of fear 
In other words, I hide behind fear. I react to every decision with fear. I make every financial decision based on fear. When somebody tells me we're sick, we plan the funeral. When somebody tells me that they have a cold, we don't go near them, right? And we, we live our lives constantly through fear. Did we see that in corona or, or coronavirus? Did we see that? We saw fear, right? We saw a lot of fear. I'm not talking about wisdom. There's wisdom, but there's also fear, right? I saw a picture of a guy during coronavirus. He was in, he was in a New York um, airport, and he was covered in a bubble wrap. I mean, bubble wrap from head to toe, like a big bubble. He was walking in this big bubble, this huge thing around him. It was awesome to see, and it made social media, of course. So, you know, he kind of won. But it was, it was redonkulous, right? Because you're looking at him going, like, that's... That's pretty fearful. Anyway, each day in our life, we face situations where we are raising up a shield of protection, and that shield can be fear or faith. Each day, we raise up and we look out a window into the world, and we look out at relationships, and we look out at situations, and we look out at circumstances, and the lens through which we look through is fear or faith. God didn't give us a shield of fear. He gave us a shield of faith. And fear and faith both finish the story with alternate endings. Which shield are we deploying in our situation? In James chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, James talks about faith and the prayer of faith. And he says, is any among you suffering? Is anyone here suffering? No? Just me? Nothing? Yeah. There's stuff in our lives, right, that hurt. Let him pray. Let her pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you? Let him, her call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of fear will save the one. No. Oh, faith. Thank you. Prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Faith is complete trust and certainty. The purpose of prayer is to invite God's presence and power into a situation. Not just prayer, the prayer of faith. A couple nights ago, I was up in the middle of the night, and I was a bit anxious. I was anxious about my kids, and I have five of them, so there's a little bit there. And each one of them has their struggles. Do you have kids with struggles? Yours are probably perfect. In the night, it's amazing how magnified worry becomes. You ever wake up in the middle of the night? Oh, talk about anxiety over did I turn the oven off? It becomes the world's going to end if I don't go check the oven, right? Because at night, everything's heightened. I was up for a couple hours just thinking about my kids and thinking and thinking and thinking and about an hour into thinking and worrying and being fearful, you know what I started doing? Praying. Why didn't I do that in the beginning? Why did I wait an hour to start praying? In the middle of this time of prayer, there was an exchange 
The situation didn't change, but there was an exchange. Kids still have to go through those things I was worrying about, but there was an exchange. And when I strengthened myself in the Lord, I came to the end of my prayer time and I felt like the Lord was saying something very simply. Do you trust me? Because Joel, it's quite humorous watching you trust yourself with this one. You're shadow boxing, weeping, crying, like energy is gone, you're down all the time. But when we come into prayer, he gives us his perspective. A consistent prayer of faith heals. A consistent prayer of faith. We get God's perspective on our situation. The shield of faith is for spiritual warfare. Let's continue on in verse 18. And pray in the spirit at all times. Everyone say all times. He doesn't say pray at all times. It says pray in the spirit. For me, that means I pray in my spiritual language. For you, that might mean pray in tongues. Maybe you don't believe in tongues. It says pray in the spirit. So let me give you a translation. Pray in the strength of the Lord. See, when I pray in the spirit, of course I'm praying my spiritual language, but I'm not just praying my spiritual language. The point is I'm praying the things the Holy Spirit is praying through me, and I pray in the spirit. When we pray in the spirit, we pray the will of God. We pray God's desires. We pray God's ideas. We pray God's language. We pray God's perspective over our situation. When we pray in the spirit, the spirit prays in us. So if I've been praying for a long time, on my own, anxious, fearful, worried, wondering, all this stuff, and I keep praying on my own, on my own, on my own, la, 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 la. Maybe I should pray in the spirit. So I come into prayer, and I say, Lord, what is your perspective over the situation? And I know that when I pray in my Holy Spirit language, for me personally, I know that's the most pure way I can pray. Now, if you don't speak in tongues or you don't pray in the spirit, that's okay. Just try to get the spirit's perspective before you start praying because we can blab and blab and blab and blab all we want. Pray in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. To this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I'll boldly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it fearlessly as I should. What does Paul say quite a bit in this passage? Pray, prayer, pray, pray, pray. What should we be doing? Praying. Pray that I may proclaim the gospel fearlessly. 
Another word for fearlessly is faithfully. Pray for me, please, church, pray for me. As the one who speaks more often up here, pray for me that I would fearlessly, faithfully proclaim the gospel. Pray for me. Every day, pray for me. I was talking to Brian before the service. I think you're over here now. Sorry, Brian. I said I might mention this, and I said it would be anonymous. (laughs) Sorry. But this touched me. And I'm an emotional guy. But he said every morning, him and his wife... They wake up, they have communion, and they pray for me, my family, my kids, our farm. I had to pray a little harder for the chickens, anyway. (laughs) We pray for our neighbors, our church. Wake, take communion, pray. That's a good challenge. It doesn't have to be the same. We're not all Brian and Bonita. But what's our daily process? Because Paul tells us to pray in the Spirit at all times. And he's saying, I mean, he's the most gifted writer, speaker, other than Jesus of all time. And he says, pray for me, please pray for me that the words that come out of my mouth would be ones from God. And he said, pray for me again. Pray, pray that I wouldn't be fearful. I'm like, you're Paul. I think of the life of Paul and the first thing that comes to mind doesn't, is not a shield of fear. What he's saying is, is we've never fully arrived. We're never completely set. We're never fully strong. We're never fully armored up and done. It says that this lifelong process of becoming strong is so that in the day when we need to be strong, we are. This lifelong process of putting on the armor is so that when we find ourselves in a battle, we are not naked in our bathing suit and flip-flops. I will tell you this. Please do not wait for the day you will have tragedy up against you to begin fumbling around looking for armor and strength. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Because what makes armor effective is the person that wears it. It is still the armor of God. It is still supernatural armor. But if I don't read the word, which is the sword of the spirit. If I don't read this and digest it and meditate on it and get God's perspective and get God's ideas on it, if I don't wield this thing well, it does no help dusty on a shelf in my house. The sword of the spirit is not a sword. That's not the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the sword In my spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that an ordinary book with words and pages becomes supernatural. This armor is not a superstitious gold cross around our necks. I put on the helmet of salvation. The Bible says, 
to work out salvation with fear and trembling. I put on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ is on me. I put on the belt of truth. Understanding truth takes a lifetime. That my feet fitted with the gospel of peace. I've spent my whole Christian walk praying for peace more than anything else. And I know why, because I face a lot of sleepless nights. But what's amazing about peace for me, because it's the one thing I've prayed for more than anything else, is because I have a lot of peace actually from the Lord, when I pray for people, 9.9 times out of 10, when I say amen, they say, how do you feel? They say, I'm just at peace. I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. I'm just, all I'm saying is, is I've spent my whole Christian walk focused on peace. So I have some to give. The shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, these, as I've described, are lifetimes. Sorry, I'm way over my sermon time, but I do want to, I don't want to miss this part. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet, didn't know how to speak, was super young, and the Lord said to him in 1 verse 9 and 10, it says, the Lord touched my mouth, and the Lord said, I have put my words in your mouth. I've set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. It would actually seem that Jeremiah never did those things. He prophesied those things, and those things came to pass. The power in Jeremiah's life was in his words. And his words were not his own. His words were the Lord's. I believe that many of us here today need new words. We need words in our prayers. Many of us need to learn to pray in the spirit to have power in our prayers. And I wanna pray for you today, and I'm not just gonna pray for you that you would have more belief when it comes to faith. I wanna pray for you today that you'd be given the supernatural gift of faith. When I say faith, I don't mean your own belief. I mean God's belief in you, God's words in you. And so if you're, if you're here today, and I, I wanna pray for something very specific. I wanna pray for those that feel like you've been praying for something, someone, situation, circumstance, and you've lost faith. You feel like you're empty, you're running out, and you need a gift of faith this morning. And if that's you this morning, I'm gonna, I wanna pray for you and I'm gonna ask you to stand. So if that's you right now this morning, if that's you where you need fresh faith, a gift of faith for your situation, I would like for you to take a moment right now and stand. I wanna pray for you. And we'll have the worship team come out. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yes. I think it's gonna be most of us, so 
And I'm already standing, so. Fresh faith, fresh faith, fresh faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's just take a few minutes. Gift of faith, gift of faith. Gift of faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, more specifically, one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, one of the outward results of the Holy Spirit that's observable and powerful is faith. So if that's you, take a moment. Bring your situation, that relationship, that situation, that sickness, that financial difficulty, that brokenness. Maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your husband, maybe it's relationship with your parents, maybe it's relationship with your grandparents, maybe it's relationship the other way with your kids or your grandkids or whatever it is that you just feel like, I need more faith, God. Just bring that up in your mind right now. If you're online and you're sitting at home and just think about that situation, right now as we join in prayer, even online. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for faith. Renewed faith, strengthened faith, supernatural faith, a shield of faith, the gift of faith to be released. To be released in this place, to be released in our lives, to be released in situations. And we declare healing, Lord. Restoration, Lord. A good result to the situation we're in, Lord. Freedom, Lord. We proclaim freedom. We proclaim promises over our kids' lives and our grandkids' lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for faith. Renewed faith. Restored faith. Powerful faith the gift of faith, Holy Spirit, that you would release it right now in this place. Release it in our prayer lives. Release it over our situations in the name of Jesus. The prayer of faith will make the sick one well. The prayer of faith, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to respond now with the song Champion. And while I said that we don't win every battle, the way we think we will win them, He wins every single battle. He fights. He is our champion. He is the one that fights with us. So I pray for faith to increase and as we sing this song I pray that you would experience the gift of faith rising up within you in Jesus name Amen